welcome and thank you for joining us. I'm so glad that you could join us today. My name is Dr. Pamela Frank. I'm a naturopathic doctor and clinic director at Forces of Nature Wellness Clinic. For anyone who doesn't already know us, we're Forces of Nature Wellness Clinic. Uh, we've been at Young Ellington in Toronto for the last 20 years. We're a team of healthcare professionals. Our therapies include registered massage therapy, chiropractic, osteopathy, acupuncture, nutrition, psychotherapy, and naturopathic medicine. We're here to talk about your shoulder, so let's talk anatomy. Your shoulder is an intricate part of your body. With the capability of almost 360 degrees of motion, your shoulder is by far the most mobile joint in your body. Your shoulder is made up of bones, joints, and tendons and ligaments. Uh, the bones that make up your shoulder include your collarbone, the shoulder blade, and the upper arm bone or humerus. There are three joints that make up your shoulder, the ball and socket of the shoulder itself, and where your collarbone meets your breastbone, and where your collarbone meets the top of your shoulder blade. Your shoulder is also made up of tendons, ligaments, and muscles. Tendons are tough cords of tissue that connect muscles to bones. Ligaments are white, shiny, flexible bands of fibrous tissue that hold your joints together and connect the various bones. Muscles help support and rotate your shoulder in many directions. All about movement. Due to the ball and socket nature of your shoulder joint, many different movements are made possible. The six movement types include extension, which means raising your arm to the front, flexion, which means raising your arm to the back, abduction, which means raising your arm away from your body, adduction, which means pulling your arm into your body, internal rotation, and external rotation. Even a minor injury can limit this range of motion, which can be both frustrating and very painful. Common conditions. While there are many ways the shoulder can be injured, the most common shoulder problems fall into four major categories. Tendon inflammation or tendon tear, instability, arthritis, and fracture or broken bone. Let's discuss each one individually. Bursitis, small fluid filled sacs called bursa act as cushions between the bones and overlying soft tissues to help reduce friction between the gliding muscles and the bone. They are found in joints throughout your body, including your shoulder. Overuse of your shoulder can cause inflammation and swelling of the bursa between the rotator cuff and part of the shoulder blade, resulting in a condition known as bursitis. With bursitis, Many daily activities, such as combing your hair or even getting dressed, may become difficult and painful. Tendonitis. Tendons are cords that connect muscle to bone. Inflammation in the tendons results in one of two types of tendonitis. Acute tendonitis can occur due to excessive ball throwing or other overhead activities during work or sport. Think of a pitcher in baseball. Chronic tendonitis is attributed to repetitive wear and tear and degenerative diseases like arthritis. The most commonly affected tendons in your shoulder are the four rotator cuff tendons and one of the biceps tendons. The rotator cuff helps provide shoulder motion and stability and keeps the arm bone aligned in the shoulder socket. Tendon tears. Long-term overuse and wear and tear, a sudden injury or aging can cause the splitting and tearing of tendons. Tears may be partial or in severe cases, tears may, be, may completely separate the tendon from its attachment to the bone or muscle. Rotator cuff and biceps tendon injuries are among the most common of these injuries. Impingement. Shoulder impingement occurs when the top of the shoulder blade puts pressure on the underlying soft tissues when your arm is lifted away from your body. As the arm is lifted, the top of your shoulder blade rubs or impinges on the rotator cuff tendons and bursa. This leads to bursitis and tendonitis, causing pain and limiting movement. Instability. 
Shoulder instability or dislocations occur when the arm bone is forced out of the shoulder socket. This can happen as a result of overuse or injury. A partial shoulder dislocation called a subluxation results in the ball of the upper arm coming just partially out of the socket. A complete dislocation means the ball comes all the way out of the socket. Dislocations can occur repeatedly as a result of loose or torn ligaments, tendons and muscles around the shoulder. Recurring dislocations, which may be partial or complete, cause pain and unsteadiness when you raise your arm or move it away from your body. Repeated episodes of subluxations or dislocations lead to an increased risk of developing arthritis in the joint. Arthritis. Any joint in your body can be impacted by arthritis. The prefix arth refers to the joint, itis refers to inflammation. So the word arthritis just means inflammation in the joint. The most common type of arthritis in the shoulder is osteoarthritis, also known as wear and tear arthritis. Symptoms such as swelling, pain, and stiffness typically begin during middle age. Osteoarthritis develops slowly and may be related to sports or work injuries or chronic wear and tear. Osteoarthritis often worsens over time. Other types of arthritis can be related to rotator cuff tears, infection, or an inflammation of the joint lining. As a result of arthritis pain, people will avoid shoulder movements, which sometimes leads to a tightening or stiffening of the soft tissue parts of the joint, resulting in a severe restriction of motion. Fracture. Shoulder fractures or broken bones commonly involve the collarbone, the upper arm bone or humerus, and shoulder blade or scapula. As you can imagine, fractures can cause severe pain, swelling, and bruising around the shoulder. Older patients can experience shoulder fractures as a result of a fall, even from standing. Additional causes of shoulder fractures include high impact injuries, such as a motor vehicle accident, or contact sports injury, as in rugby or football. Shoulder health. Like any Injury prevention is key. There are several steps you can take to ensure good shoulder health. To start, listen to your body. This sounds simple, but too often people ignore pain symptoms causing further damage and prolonging healing. If you experience shoulder soreness or pain following activity, don't ignore it. There's no need to tough it out. Take a break for a few days to allow your body to heal itself. See your naturopathic doctor, osteopath, chiropractor or acupuncturist. If the pain is severe and doesn't go away, see your doctor. Practice good workout habits. Another way to prevent injury is to stay active. Keep your body in good physical shape with regular exercise and a healthy diet. Not only is physical activity necessary, exercising the right way is crucial to injury prevention. Warm up before you work out. Start slowly if you haven't done a sport or an activity in a while. Learn how to lift weights the right way and don't lift too much. If you spend a lot of time doing overhead motions or have a job that requires overhead work, try cross training. Cross training can be a great way to avoid injury while maintaining your physical fitness. For example, if you're a swimmer, try trading one or two swimming workouts for running or biking to reduce stress on your shoulder. Increase strength. Lifting and exercising using proper form to strengthen your shoulder helps stabilize the joint and prevent painful dislocation injuries. Here are a couple of exercises you can try. If you have weak shoulder muscles or have an injury, start without weight or use a water bottle for a weight. Arm circles with weights. Stand with your feet, head hip width apart, and hold a light weight in each hand. Lift your arms. Let your arms hang loosely at your sides and then lift upward, making small circles until they are in a horizontal position. Briefly hold this position and then slowly lower your arms again. Repeat this exercise 10 to 12 times per side. Alternate between forward and backward circles. 
do a total of three sets per side. Stabilizer exercise. While holding a light weight, stretch your arm straight out in front of you. Make sure your hand is at the height of your shoulder and your arm is straight. Hold the weight steady for 30 to 60 seconds, then switch sides and repeat the exercise. Three sets per side. Avoiding on the job injuries. Avoid work for too long by taking a break to stand or walk around every hour. When lifting, do so safely by keeping your back straight and use your legs. Don't strain to reach things. Instead, use a step stool if you have to reach high places or play games you regularly use in drawers. Any of these physical therapists can work with you to tailor treatments, stretches, and a rehab exercise routine to get your shoulder back to normal. Sessions can also include various modalities such as stretching, kinesio taping, soft tissue work, acupuncture, mobilizations, and massage to help reduce your pain. Beyond back pain. Our chiropractors are known for treating issues of the back and spine, including back and neck pain. However, chiropractic care can also be extremely beneficial to pain associated with the shoulders and other extremities. No matter what your specific shoulder issue, a chiropractor will begin with a targeted diagnosis to determine where the source of irritation begins. Once a diagnosis of the precise physical cause is made, treatment for shoulder pain can begin. While relief will start after the first adjustment, a series of chiropractic adjustments may be required to help your shoulder pain issue to resolve completely. Our chiropractors also use various modalities for pain management, including manual adjustments, mobilizations, acupuncture, kinesio taping, soft tissue work, and massage. Our osteopath will conduct an orthopedic examination to find out exactly where, what is causing the shoulder pain. Then she will use osteopathy treatments, such as soft tissue work, mobilization, and muscle energy techniques to decrease your shoulder pain. In addition, she will teach you to do exercises and stretches in between osteopathy appointments to achieve your recovery goals. According to our osteopathic manual practitioner, Peggy Jamali, how long recovery takes varies depending on the cause and intensity of the pain. Sometimes shoulder pain is because of upper back or neck pain. In older patients, if your hips are tilted, it will pull the muscles of the lower back, upper back, and shoulder out of alignment and cause pain. Whether you're interested in injury prevention or working on rehabilitation, keep in mind there is no one-size-fits-all approach. Each person's unique anatomy, symptoms, medical diagnosis, and goals should direct one's choice of exercises and treatments, which is why speaking with a professional regarding your specific needs is recommended to help you maintain or regain optimal health. Did you know that all of our pros offer a free 15-minute consultation to help you determine whether their treatment is best for you? Prevention versus recovery. It's essential to keep in mind prevention and recovery from shoulder injury may require different exercises and protocols. Some activities that are optimal for maintaining shoulder joint health and injury prevention may not be appropriate if you have a past or existing shoulder injury. Our website has extensive information about all of the conditions we can help and how, including shoulder injuries, and all of the types of treatments that we offer. Visit us at forcesofnature.ca. Congratulations, we did it. Thanks for joining us today. We know we covered a lot of information, but we're here to help. Please post any questions below or email us at info at forcesofnature.ca. Remember to allow any part of your body adequate rest by getting enough sleep and work different body parts on different days. If you've experienced an injury, don't ignore your pain. We're here to assist you with any injury or preventive measure you're interested in, not just shoulder pain. Call 
481-0222 to book with any of our physical therapists or book online anytime at forcesofnature.janeapp.com. That's forcesofnature.janeapp.com. Thanks again. We'll aim to do more of these educational sessions. If you're interested, keep an eye on our Facebook page or our website, forcesofnature.ca, or sign up for our email newsletter on our website for more information. We've already scheduled our next webinar, which will be on Monday, January the 13th at 7 p.m. The topic will be autoimmune disorders. If you'd like to register for that, our registration page is forcesofnature.se y-n-d-u-i-t dot com forward slash uppercase c-n-w-0-0-0-1. Once again, that's forcesofnature dot synduit dot com forward slash uppercase c-n-w-0-0-0-1. Hopefully, we'll see you again on Monday, January 13th at 7 p.m. to talk about autoimmune disorders. If you have any questions or constructive feedback, I would be happy to answer them or direct them to the appropriate professional. Thanks again. See you soon.